Our next speaker is Professor James McKinney. If you double the size of your rocket, you don't double the size of your payload. So you're very limited. And now let's try and get to the next planet or out to the moon. We have to start sending individual things up there, couple them together, and then go out to these other planets. Uh, by the way, there's a small problem with going to the moon and inch by inch, NASA is leaking out that they know that there's a problem there. It's called the Van Allen belts, high radiation belts of charged particles around Earth, and we don't know how to get through them, they say. Well, isn't that interesting because there sure didn't seem to be a problem back in 1969. <laughs> Obviously, they didn't go to the moon. The United States did not go to the moon. The Russians knew it all along. Uh, I thought at the time we did, but I've since learned we absolutely did not. And there's no question about it. And they're starting to figure it out. NASA has a program called Living with a Star. That's a pretty name for how do we get through the Van Allen belts. They have all their top scientists working on it. It's a tremendous problem because we do not have any kind of a spacecraft that we can send up that doesn't have metal in it. And when these charged particles hit metal, they produce x-rays. Nothing you can do to get around that. So anybody sitting around something metal in outer space in the Van Allen belts is going to be French fried. And so that whole thing was a giant hoax. And you have second and third tier scientists in the United States who are running around saying, oh, yes, we did, yes, we did. But the very top level people, what I call the tier one scientists, the black op mill scientists, know for a fact we didn't go. And it's a real problem. They don't know how to get through there. This picture is with the new Hubble camera. And it shows that, in fact, if you take this angular distance out to Pluto and you translate it into the surface of the moon, we can, in fact, resolve the landing sites, the alleged lunar landing sites. And the way you would do this is you take the pictures at dusk when the shadows became very long and it would be a very hard thing for them to fake. So at any rate, we have telescopes on Earth that are much larger than the Hubble. Much better resolving power. So why, you would think these astronomers would be chomping at the bit to show you those lunar landing sites. And look at the incredible resolving power of this telescope we have here. Why have none of them done that? Because there ain't nothing there. And we get all kinds of excuses. Oh, we can't turn the telescope up there because the moon's too bright. Well, then all of a sudden we saw the full moon on a web page, on a NASA web page, the entire full moon taken with the Hubble Space Telescope. And you're telling me they can't take one little teeny patch of the moon, which is millions of times less bright. So bottom line is they know they didn't go.